Hi everybody, and welcome back to another weekly wolf vlog. My name's Joshua, and today we're gonna to be taking you through pretty much all things uh, aftermarket AeroPress. So the humble AeroPress has been around on the market for quite a long time, as it stands, and now you're gonna be able to purchase uh, other items that will go to enhance what you're already brewing. So this is quite timely now. Around the world, the AeroPress Championships have begun and they'll be ending up finalizing at the World Championships in Sydney this year. Here, in fact, the Wolf Coffee Roasters will be hosting the Queensland AeroPress Championships once again. It's gonna be a fantastic event. We're quite proud to announce that we'll be raising funds for women's legal services in Queensland. It is for the prevention of domestic violence on behalf of dancing CEOs. Now, our CEO, Penny Wolf, will be taking part in one of the largest galas in Brisbane where she uh, jumps out of the boardroom to jump onto the dance floor and hoping to raise $20,000. And so I'm gonna throw a link uh, below this video. If you'd like to help and donate on the night, all those funds raised will be going towards Women's Legal Services Queensland. It's an amazing project and we're really happy to be on board. So let's take a look at the first product uh, I've brought in to you today. And this one is the Espresso Mezzo. I bought this off a Kickstarter fund back in 2014. Uh, it was sent out to me, made in the USA in a flat pack. I think it's fantastic. It's durable and really ergonomic, made out of sustainable materials. And it's, it holds all your AeroPress tools that you would get in your regular AeroPress pack. And it just makes for making an AeroPress really easy. Uh, I can see how it might work in a cafe environment where you're making AeroPress after AeroPress, much like tamping. Uh, there's a lot of effort involved and this just takes out more of that effort. Uh, so it's really simple and easy to use. Uh, essentially, you've got a handle here, uh, which works as a press. You would set your AeroPress up on top of your cup, brew your AeroPress, place your plunger on top. And from this point, you just need to press down. Now I'm not adding too much effort at all, nor am I too concerned about that cup flipping out and under me like you might would uh, in any other kind of situation with an AeroPress. Really easy and simple, and it's kind of like go back to reload, make another AeroPress. Affordable flat pack. Now, don't know if they're being made anymore. Espresso Mezzo. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna enhance the flavor of the AeroPress so much, uh, but it certainly takes out some of the effort. That's why I like this one. So the next few items I'm gonna be talking about are specifically to do with the filtration uh, of the AeroPress. And when you buy a regular AeroPress pack, it comes with 350 paper filters, uh, and you use them in this cap here. Now what you find uh, on the market these days is in a range of different types of filters, some of them using different papers, and some of them even using more reusable materials such as metal or fabric. So I've got uh, three examples of them here today, and uh, there certainly are a few more uh, out there available. Um, I could bring you all of them, but essentially this is kind of makes up uh, the majority of them. And now first up from uh, Canada, there's a cafe in Vancouver called Obode Cafe, and uh, they've brought out these AeroPress paper filters uh, that are, have increased thickness to them. Uh, similar to like a Chemex filter paper, uh, I've used these in making my AeroPress, and I really do believe that they make a much cleaner, uh, more balanced and sweet AeroPress. So the uh, Acer papers, uh, they're a high filtration paper. They really do remove a lot more of the sediment than a regular AeroPress paper filter. Uh, so you can find them online. Now, beyond paper filters, single use, what you have now are different types of materials that you can use uh, within your filtration cap. These, I have two examples of these. One is a Kohi uh, metal fabric filter, and the other is a Able Disc filter. Now this Able Disc is the fine filtration, uh, but there's also a regular filtration. Difference with there is uh, just the size of the holes. Anytime we talk about filtration, it's always about what it holds back and what it lets into the cup. So what do these two metal filters and majority of metal filters do uh, that in comparison to paper filter? Well, they do let a lot of the oils through. So generally paper filters uh, will hold back the oils, 
whereas metal filter will allow a lot more through. By allowing more of the oils through, you tend to get more of a, a rounder, heavier cup of coffee and a fuller flavor of coffee. So it kind of like lasting on the mouth, those oils will coat the inside of the mouth. However, both of these products boast an ultra fine filtration, so you're still not getting uh, a lot of the fines or a lot of the sediment in the cup as you would normally uh, using a single regular AeroPress filter paper. So uh, Kohi Labs uh, metal fabric, uh, really awesome piece of material. Uh, it's made out of me super fine mesh metal, um, but is also super flexible so it, uh, you can bend it and it doesn't crease. Built for the AeroPress straight into your cap. And also the Able Disc. The benefit of having these two, I think, is they're ideal for travel. Whereas uh, paper filters, they're single use, you could run out, they can get wet in your bag. As long as you don't accidentally th throw these out in the bin with your puck, you can pretty much make an AeroPress wherever you are and not have to worry about running out of uh, paper filters. So that's why these are really beneficial as well. The next two items I'm gonna bring you are also Kickstarter products. Really cool uh, way of enhancing what the AeroPress already brings to the table. So these attachments from the AeroPress uh, really go towards making a different style of AeroPress. Uh, so uh, with your regular AeroPress coffee that you make, depending on the ratios and how you make it, definitely, uh, but I suppose you would just call it a regular uh, filter coffee. However, just recently it made quite an exciting debut on the market, uh, was the Prismo AeroPress coffee attachment made by fellow products. Uh, so this attachment uh, boasts the ability to make uh, espre almost espresso style and certainly espresso strength coffee using your AeroPress. So the attachment itself is, is quite simple and easy to use. Uh, it also comes with its own uh, metal mesh filter as well. So you can use that in combination with a paper filter or on its own. Essentially what this does is it does away with the regular filter cap uh, and you're gonna be adding this filter cap to the bottom of your AeroPress. Now the bottom of the uh, Prismo is a pressure activated valve. And so you're able to brew your coffee with no drips coming out. And that way when you press out, uh, it'll only be coming out of one singular valve and you'll be able to add uh, a lot more pressure through the AeroPress. So I guess that's where you see the espresso quality uh, that you would normally uh, get using an espresso machine, having that concentrated flavor and, and crema is what you're gonna be looking for. So they suggest you use 20 grams of coffee to 50 mils of hot water. Now you probably wanna grind that coffee fairly fine and also uh, you'll, you, you can brew as long as you want just to increase the strength of flavor, I guess. And when you're ready to press, uh, you just press like a normal AeroPress, but you'll notice that it'll come out in a single stream and, and it should have a good strong crema to it. So that ratio of 20 grams of coffee to 50 grams of water uh, is pretty close to a one to two ratio, uh, what you would normally be using with an espresso. Using the same method and brew ratio, uh, you probably couldn't use the regular AeroPress cap, uh, and that's why uh, this Prismo attachment is quite valuable. Uh, and again, it just kind of uh, holds value along with the AeroPress it being very easy to use, very portable and simple to clean. So the fellow Prismo AeroPress attachment, really like it. Now, again, the, the actual cup of coffee that you get out of it uh, will be very concentrated. It'll generally be a, quite a small cup of coffee as well. And uh, you could then go and add milk or extra water to it if you wanna be having an Americano, long black, or even your lattes. So fellow Prismo, Highly recommend that if you're keen on making espresso style coffee with your AeroPress. So the last attachment to the AeroPress I wanna share with you today is the Puck Puck. Now we've already taken a look at different styles of filtrations. Uh, we've had a look at the Prismo, which makes espresso style coffee out of your AeroPress. The Puck Puck, I literally only got this in the mail like last week. It's uh, from a company in the UK, uh, also a Kickstarter uh, campaign. And the Puck Puck is designed to turn your regular AeroPress into a cold brew system. There are some home hack jobs uh, in turning your AeroPress into a cold brew system. Uh, and I feel like the Puck Puck ha has 
taken all those uh, uh, into consideration and then gone and improved um, with this uh, product. Uh, you're able to control the drip rate uh, with this cold brew system. So what is the Puck Puck? Well, the Puck Puck itself uh, is this circular disc uh, that uh, sits on the top of your AeroPress. Now there is an optional water vessel uh, that holds 500 mils uh, on top of your AeroPress. Uh, so I did opt in for this one. Otherwise, the greatest, uh, the great design of the Puck Puck is also that uh, this product will screw into a generic size mineral water bottle. So you can use any style water bottle, uh, chill it down, and then you've got cold water that way. So when you turn that uh, water bottle upside down, um, what you do is you actually spin these two discs towards each other or further away, much like the uh, disc on like a, an espresso grinder, uh, and that allows uh, the drips to drip faster or slower, depending on how further or closer these two discs are away. Uh, so it, I think it's a really great design. Again, it goes in line with the AeroPress. It's quite portable, easy to use, easy to clean. Uh, so let's take a look how do you use it. So you get your regular AeroPress chamber. Uh, you're still gonna be using uh, a paper filter and you've got again a choice of paper filters. We're just gonna be using a regular paper filter here. Lock in your chamber. You're gonna be adding that on top of quite a larger vessel because we'll be brewing with a lot more water in this case. And we're not gonna be using the plunger in this sense and that's how the puck puck comes into play. So adding my water vessel and screwing that into my uh, puck puck cap and that will sit nice and easy on top of the AeroPress. And what I will do is I would add my coffee in first. The puck puck sits, sits simply on top of the AeroPress like that. And you would just control the drip to ensure that you can get a nice slow uh, extraction. Over six to eight hours is, I would say, for this method ideal. Now, cold brew, again, completely different to any other uh, method of AeroPressing that you're making with your regular AeroPress. I find uh, cold brew, uh, it's quite balanced and round, uh, and it doesn't have as much bitterness as a regular hot coffee would have uh, using uh, an AeroPress, I suggest. So yeah, that's the Puck Puck. I love it. Certainly in Queensland, it's always summer, uh, so you can always be drinking uh, a cold brew any day of the week. Those are all the products uh, I wanted to share with you today. I hope you've liked this video about the AeroPress. And if you want to comment, uh, jump down and uh, add your own comments or experiences with an AeroPress and how you like to brew the AeroPress. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.